This is Coach Kev and Coach Mike from Structure Personal Fitness, and we are doing a quick Q&A. These are five uh, member submitted questions. We're going to answer them as quickly as possible without rambling. At least Mike won't ramble. I may ramble, but Mike will be quick and to the point. So without further ado, question number one, what is the first step I should take if I want to lose fat? Mike? Um, I tell everyone the first step in losing fat is track what you're eating, whether you're doing it by hand or with an app like MyFitnessPal or lose it. Um, track your calories, figure out how many you are eating, and then based on your weight, body fat percentage, gender, a few other factors, we'll come up with a calorie target for you and try to eat at that number every day. So if they get that number, mm -hmm. What is that number typically based off of? Um, body fat percentage, like basically your your basal metabolic rate, the number of calories you burn at rest to support your organ function and general living, non-exercise energy burned, and thermic effect of food. Okay. So your metabolism um, generally minus like 500 calories. So for most people, it makes sense to have you at about one to two pounds of fat loss per week as the goal, which would be about 500 to 1,000 calories per day as your deficit. And this is a not a question listed, but somebody asked this the other day. If somebody comes to you and says, um, it's been 10 days, I'm tracking everything, I've hit all my numbers, I'm getting my sleep, but I haven't lost a pound. What do you mm -hmm. think? So it's going to vary by person, but... 10 days is a relatively short period of time, um, assuming it was a weigh-in and then another weigh-in 10 days later. There could be a number of factors that affect body weight in the short term. Carb storage in the muscles, hydration, sodium, um, did you just use the bathroom, right? There's a number of factors. Do you have a full stomach? Do you not? Did you just eat a meal? Um, but if if weight hasn't moved, like you've weighed in every single day for 10 days and, and you're stuck there, um, to start a diet, I would probably wait another five to seven days and then possibly bring calories down. I think one of the other things to think about too is that the scale isn't always a good indicator, like you said, of fat loss. It's one of them, mm -hmm. but the other one is how do you feel? How do you look? How do you feel and look in your clothes? Mm -hmm. Right, so we, we have more than one variable. We also have body fat. I mean, we can take the body fat measurements um, and uh, circumference measurements. So. Another thing to consider is if you're just beginning strength training, your capacity for carb storage in the muscles, muscle glycogen, actually increases. So most people, though they're eating fewer calories than they burn when they start strength training, you'll see waist measurements go down, but scale weight actually goes up. So you look better, you feel better, that number is going up, that's why. Enough on that. Anything else? No. Good? All right. Try not to ramble. Somebody will have something else. All right. Question number two from another member. Why should I be increasing my protein intake during this fat loss phase, and won't that make me bulky? Will protein make you big and bulky? So protein is one of the three, four macronutrients, carbs, fats, alcohol, technically. Um, eating a surplus of total calories will cause you to gain weight. Eating a high protein or a moderate to high protein diet when you're eating fewer calories than you burn will not cause you to be big and bulky. It will actually, it'll help you to be more full, um, protein more so than other macronutrients, helps you feel full, stay full longer. You also burn more calories through the digestion process when eating protein than fat or carbs. Um, and it's delicious, right? Who doesn't like steak? Or protein Dude. shakes. That's what's for dinner. Protein shakes. Oh, man. That's question number five. We'll get to that. No. All right. Um, question number three. Why is sleep so important for fat loss? Um, so I, I've read a number of studies on sleep. Um, I'm going to start by saying that when you are tired and when you're sleep deprived, that's more hours you're awake. And when you're awake more hours, you're in a calorie deficit 
you're going to be hungry. So that's more hours for you to screw up your diet. Um, you're going to be irritable. You're going to be stressed. You're sleep deprived. Cortisol levels are higher. Like, there was a study where men, like middle aged men, slept five to six hours a night for two weeks and testosterone levels were down 15%, which oh. is actually huge. Um, further, it's in your stage four, stages three and four, the deep sleep cycle. So once you've been asleep for like 60 to 90 minutes that you produce growth hormone, which also helps you lose fat. Um, so basically your hormone environment is thrown into whack when you're not sleeping enough. So from both a, uh, hormonal standpoint, but also from a, um, basically willpower standpoint, yeah. you're going to yeah. have the, the energy, the thought process behind, you're not going to say, oh, I'm tired, I could go and eat this instead. Mm -hmm. You're going to have that mental capacity to think a little bit clearer. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Good. I've actually had uh, multiple instances where clients have come back from vacation and said, and I lost weight. And I say, well, you go to bed usually at 11 o'clock and you wake up at 4.30. And what did you do on vacation? They say, I slept Relax. eight hours a night. Yeah. I didn't, I, uh, I, but, I, but I drank more. I, it's not about... X's and O's, it's not that simple. It's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit more complex, especially when it comes to hormones. What we've seen is just, it's, it, it gets, it gets a little, little tricky, but you have to start with sleep. Good, good. Uh, this question, number four, we'll go back and forth on this, but so during the workouts, you have us going heavy and quite frequently. Why? Yeah, so strength training for fat loss. Um, it is my personal opinion that keeping things pretty simple and going heavy is the best way to lose fat, not because you're burning a lot of calories doing so, but by lifting heavy, you're retaining your lean body mass, that nice muscle tissue that us guys and girls want, while losing fat, right? Um, and you, you can't, it's very difficult for most people to build lean tissue in a calorie deficit, so hypertrophy training style really doesn't make a lot of sense for most people, which is a, another reason that we should be strength training. I think the other thing to keep in mind here too is that people have trained in the past uh, frequently. You get people that have trained since they were kids, they, had, they were high school athletes, college athletes, and so they have a training history. But one of the things that often goes unnoticed is the central nervous system, um, when stimulated, has a high metabolic demand. Right, there's a high demand when you go heavy. Well, mentally you have to focus more. Um, you actually it takes a lot out of you when you when you go heavier. Um, and the one thing that I think is often um, neglected is the type of muscle fiber recruited when you go heavy. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. type of muscle fiber that you recruit when you go heavy is very different than that slow twitch muscle fiber that doesn't have a high caloric requirement, doesn't have a high force output. No offense, marathon runners, but it doesn't always make you look sexy. Um, and the muscles that you're going to stimulate by going heavy, basically with it, with less time, uh, I think you'll you'll find that you're more efficient. Your activities of daily living are easier. One of my expressions, especially uh, in New York City, uh, is that if you are richer, everything else costs less, and if you are stronger, everything else weighs less. If there's a mom who can deadlift. 200 pounds, which we've had before, we've had multiple instances, going to mow the lawn in the suburbs, going to uh, push the stroller, going to uh, the grocery store. These are not yeah. huge activities. You can't do anything, right. And, but in, in the same token, we have a lot of people that this is a problem. We've had people come in and they hurt their shoulder from carrying their bags of groceries, and they said they carried it wrong, and they felt it. And that's a problem, because then that sets them back from their ultimate goal, which is fat loss. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about Keeping the goal the goal, we have to remember that uh, we also have to keep the uh, person and their strengths and weaknesses in mind. And for a lot of women and a lot of men who aren't familiar with going heavy, one of the first things that can really, really change the metabolism is learning to push the limits safely. Uh, that's why we spend a lot of time warming up. But also um, knowing that they're, they're tackling a type of muscle fiber that going to spinning three times a week isn't going to touch going to a group fitness class isn't going to touch and most of all they're probably not used to it. if you get comfortable being a little bit more uncomfortable in working in different heart rates working in different intensities you're going to stimulate a part of your metabolism that 
probably hasn't been stimulated in quite a, in quite a while. If you can run a mile in eight minutes, that's great. That's eight minutes. But if you can lift 200 pounds as a 120 pound mom of two and lift that five times and do four sets in eight minutes, there's a very different force output, a very different type of muscle fiber stimulated and a very different type of metabolic increase post workout that you're going to see. So I think overall, there's a lot of reasons. I think that's our most basic. Train him. Train him. Uh, last question for today. What are the best sources of protein? Going back to protein. Best protein. So I'm assuming this question is I'm having trouble getting enough protein while keeping my calories down, which is generally what I have seen and heard. So that is the point of view I'll answer it from. Um, good lean protein sources include like the obvious ones, chicken breast, different types of fish, um, lean red meat, whether it's ground beef or lean cuts of steak, pork, pork chops. Um, Whey protein powder is a good source. Eggs, egg whites, egg beaters. What I like to do is mix in like one or two yolks if I'm trying to keep that down. Um, one or two yolks for flavor and then add like five or six extra egg whites in there. Um, what haven't I said? Dairy sources. If you do dairy, um, Greek yogurt, skim cottage cheese, or even full fat cottage cheese if you can make them for that in calories. Um, Let's let's take a mild tangent because I think those Turkey. are all great, right? Turkey. Mm -hmm. um, what if somebody comes and says, "Well, uh, what about nuts?" Because people yeah. people come in and they say, "Well, they're high in protein." <laughs> are, are they really high in protein, or is it a is it a decent source of protein, but they are very high in fat, and you have to watch your your quantity? I, I wouldn't even call it a decent source of protein. It's one of my biggest pet peeves, particularly in vegetarians oh. who like to say. I get plenty of protein from nuts. Nuts are like like 70 to 75% fat, which is fine. We need fats in our diet. Fat is great, um, but nuts are not a protein source. There's fiber in nuts. It's probably like 15% protein, 15% carbs, something like that, um, give or take, and 70% and fat. So no, um, loading up on nuts for fat loss is probably not a great idea. If you can handle just like a handful without eating the entire bag like me, then go for it. But no, not a good protein source. All right. Well, that wraps it up for our edition of uh, As the Structure World Turns. Just made that up. Is that the name? That's the name. I like that. And uh, Volume 1, Episode 1. Uh, keep sending in your questions. Um, we get a lot of fan uh, email. We have fans. Mike has fans. As his website says, he's an international heartthrob. I'm just a coach. So. so yeah, see ya. Well, self-defense. And uh, until next time, we'll see you soon. Thanks, guys.